Mr. Will. No, you're, you're a bunch of idiots. We're going to keep spoiled. going. You're spoiled by endless growth, endless immigration from. Hell, everyone. Today, our guest is Harry Dent. Harry Schuler Dent Jr. is an American financial newsletter writer. His 2009 book, The Great Depression Ahead, appear on the New York Times bestseller list. In this video, Harry Dent predicts a huge crash in the U.S. and global economy, as well as forecasting other major financial events, best assets to invest in, and much more. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell's remarks during the Jackson Hole Economic Policy Symposium 2022 were a jolt from the blue for the market. Dow 30 had crashed by over 1,000 points, while the Nasdaq lost 4.1% by the time the market closed on Friday last week. On Monday also, the U.S. stocks are trading lower and all indices are in red. S&P 500, Dow 30 and Nasdaq 100 are lower by 0.82%, 0.75% and 0.56% respectively. Taken together, the Dow 30 has already shed over 1,200 points since August 26, the day the Fed chief delivered the hawkish comment. While many may argue that the decision to tackle inflation came too late from the Fed, the chief made it clear in his Jackson Hole speech that interest rates may continue to remain elevated for some time to come. What he also warned about was the impending danger to the economy. While higher interest rates, slower growth, and softer labor market conditions will bring down inflation, they will also bring some pain to households and businesses. These are the unfortunate costs of reducing inflation, but a failure to restore price stability would mean far greater pain. What I've been warning about most, Greg, which nobody gets, including Jim Rickards and all the gold bucks, the next stage after we get through this challenge is deflation in prices, asset prices, $525 trillion of financial assets, stocks, real estate, bonds, and all this stuff go down 40, 50% and money disappears. The economy slows because of that. And more than in the last recession, the great recession in 2008, because we just took that recession and printed money out of it. <laughs> That's not a solution, okay? I, Greg, I hate to say it, I, I have a hard time saying anything about economists without, you know, cussing, okay? Because they don't get anything about our economy. You do not have booms without bust. And in bust, you, you get rid of the excesses of the last boom and, and, and the worst companies. And you make way for new things and new technologies and the next generation. And that's how we grow. We have to have booms and busts. We have to go up and down. No, everybody wants a 3% growth economy, a 2% inflation that never has a recession. Everybody wants to go to heaven. Well, you can't do that here on earth. What's the principle of energy? A battery has positive and negative poles. It's the play of opposites that creates energy and energy creates manifestation and life and growth in the economy and all the things we want, you know, kids and babies and everything. You have to have this play of opposites. Now, the problem is we as people have our own biases. Oh, we like the booms in the play of opposite. Oh, we don't like the bust and the recessions, you know. Oh, we oh, inflation is kind of bad. Oh, deflation is worse. Um, we don't understand that life does not work. We do not grow. We cannot have this miracle of existence if you think about it i mean our standard of living is 10 times what it was 120 years ago 10 times that's a miracle and we're sitting here thinking oh we don't have enough money and blah 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 i can't pay the bills and blah 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 blah, blah. we are what this is crazy what happens in this play of opposites and it's not just boom and bust inflation and deflation it's male and female okay why why are we attracted to each other, even though we're opposite? Because we create this energy together in this dynamic. We offset 
each other's um, strengths and weaknesses as men and women. So, so it's male and female. It's dark and light. You look at the universe out there. Oh, there's all this darkness, but there's also these lights and stars. And you know what people who have to deal with movies and TV and stuff say, you know, the way you get the best colors and light is have the darkest background, dark and light. Okay. It is this play of opposites. Central banks are creating magic money out of thin air thrown into the economy to make financial assets higher, to make people feel a little richer and to keep the economy growing at one to 2% while we go to our grave. We're, we're going to have the biggest collapse since 1929 to 32, likely in the next two to three years. And you know, right now, not a sign of it, Greg. Mm. <laughs> That's when you should worry, when there's not a sign, where the leaves are not rustling, when there's no, no birds chirping, nothing. Something's wrong here. We're growing for no reason on artificial stimulus now for 12 years. And it just took $9 tr trillion, 44% of the GDP of the US just to keep us crawling forward I think we're in trouble. If you don't, you're blind. I, I People hate me right now, Greg. I'm sorry. You know, I, people loved me when I was bullish in the early 90s and stuff and Dow 10,000 by 2000 back when it was 2000, you know. No, people hate me right now. I'm sorry you need to listen to me, not the people in the government and economists who say, oh, it's okay. We'll just, oh, we have a crisis. We'll just print another $5 trillion. What's the problem? That is something for nothing. And the stupidest policies ever, ever, ever. And mark my words, I'm gonna have to ha ask you to listen to this today and listen to this five to 10 years from now. This will go down as the stupidest, most naive policies in all history. You could wave a magic wand and make a great recession or depression go away. Oh, that's fairy tales. That's <laughs> when you sell, wake up. Real estate is the same stupid, dumb, good or bad, modern or ancient house you live in. And should it be worth two to three times what it was 10 years ago? Wake up. It's different if you have a stock that has grown 100% and has earnings growing 200%. Okay, that's not what real estate is in Australia anywhere. Same stupid house you're sitting in worth two, three, four times as much and you think you should buy it and buy more of it? If you do, you're, uh, listen to me, listen to me, eye to eye. You're an idiot if you think that. This is the wrong time to buy. The fact that it's going up so much and stocks are doing the same thing in the late stage of this bubble, that's the sign of a top. Not, if you think that's a buying opportunity, you know nothing. So that's why you listen to me. I understand that you would be tempted by that. You just watch things, you do better. Of course you do. I'm the guy that looks at history, ups and downs, booms and busts, inflation to deflation. I'm the guy that can tell you when this makes sense or not. This makes no sense to me whatsoever to buy real estate, especially in Australia, especially in the Gold Coast. Do you hear me on that? If you don't, and I'm, I'm wrong two years from now, shoot me with my own gun. But Harry, we're Australia and New Zealand. We're different to the rest of the world. No, we're you're a bunch of idiots. We're going to keep spoiled. going. You're spoiled by endless growth, endless immigration from people who are smarter than you from Asia, and you think you're confusing brains with a bull market. Do not ever confuse brains with a bubble or bull market. That's what I can say to you from studying history. I don't care who you are, where you are. I am more worried about Australia's bubble bursting and Canada's bubbles bursting in real estate than the US because you guys have a big bubble and you are stupider about it. You think this cannot burst, which is the exact reason to sell now. But Mark Boris said it'll go up and then just flat line. Oh, Mark Boris doesn't know, he's in the industry. I love him. He's the nicest guy I've ever met. He's smart. He's in the industry. He's promoting the industry and mortgage and stuff. Don't listen to somebody in the industry to decide if the industry's overvalued or not. They're not objective. I don't give a shit about anything.
Did you hear that? I don't care about anything. I am objective. Maybe the only objective person in the world left. I'm saying greatest bubble in real estates and stocks and all financial assets and all of history, the most global, and it's going to burst. And when it bursts, there is no soft landing possible anywhere, especially Australia, because you are the second worst real estate bubble in the world, second only to coastal China. And that's really bad. The concept of it is for real. Okay, I'm going to have to step back here. Forget everything you've heard about Bitcoin and blockchain and stuff. It's all bullshit, okay? People don't understand it, okay? What Bitcoin and blockchain technologies, more importantly, are, is the next wave of computer software technologies to deal with not information like on Internet 1.0, information and everybody communicating and talking and trading information around the world that was a huge innovation and it took decades to come to fruition now what blockchain is ultimately and and bitcoin is just the harbinger potential harbinger or potential standard of and may or may not be in the long term okay blockchain does the same thing for financial assets and money. And of course, financial assets and money is worth more than just mere information. So this is to me, internet 2.0. So the way I look at blockchain and even, and in Bitcoin, even the people, I'm in Puerto Rico where tons of people are fleeing down here from, from the Bitcoin industry, okay, and crypto. And I know a lot of people down here I, to me, they they see the long-term potential like I do. It's the internet of financial assets, huge 20 years from now. They don't see how they could have as big a crash as the dot-com retailers did, like Amazon, and from 2000 to 2001 or two in the first tech bubble. The dot-com stocks came at the end of the broader tech bubble and made it much greater because they were part of the NASDAQ back then. And then they created a much bigger crash. Amazon literally went from six to 136 back to six in four years and crashed. And then now it's worth, you know, 3,500. The concept of a Federal Reserve shift that may endanger its fight against inflation was shot down as Jerome Powell gave a stern warning that rates will likely stay high for some time. The impact on the economy because of higher rates for a long time may prove to be detrimental. Stock markets are already pricing in future rate hikes, but what is still unknown is the peak inflation number and how badly the economy is going to be hit. Will there be an official recession in US remains to be seen as the GDP growth rate in the previous two quarters already showed a decline. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.